Hey guys, we'll hear from Open Hackspace. And as you can see, I'm printing something a little different today. In the last five years of printing, I never thought I'd be at a point where I'd have to print medical PPE gear for folks because of a pandemic in our country. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what exactly it is I'm printing, how I'm printing it, how I automate it, how you, if you have a CR10 and similar setup, can also automate to print these, and then talk about some of the safety precautions I've taken in order to ensure that, one, I don't contaminate anything and on down the road. So the first things first, this part was designed by a company called Prusa, and it's the RC3 version of their face mask component that they've released. And as you can see here, I'm printing the top portion. This would be the part that would go around a person's head, and essentially there would be a piece of plexiglass that would go across the front on the four prongs that you're seeing here. And then there's a bottom piece that is also printed that helps weigh it down to keep the flex on it. And I'll print those at a later part of today. So essentially what I've got here is I've got a standard CR-10 with a couple of modifications to it in order to allow it to be automated. And as you can see, I've got a Raspberry Pi hooked into it that's uh, helping perform some of those functions. So the first things first, the physical modifications that were made this printer in order to get this done were... I add in this piece of plexiglass here, and this is a bracket off of an old CR-10. So what's happening right now is my printer is resetting itself because it just finished the part, right? So let's talk a little bit about what happened here. So basically, my printer is going to go up. It's going to wait for the bed to cool down to 26 degrees. And then it's going to go behind. And you can see right here that the head is moved off to the side. And it's going to go sit behind the part with this T-bracket I've installed. And it'll take a second for it to drop down. And then once it gets to the, the part where it needs to be, it'll just stop and wait. Now... I'm going to speed this portion up a little bit by flexing this piece so we can just see how this is done. Now you'll notice I'm wearing latex gloves to pretend, prevent contamination. So I'm going to fake it out by telling it it's reached the correct temperature already. So what's going to happen now is it's going to do a 60 second standoff and then once that standoff time is met it'll actually drive the part forward onto the plexiglass I installed here. Now the plexiglass you can see I just notched out so it fits around this center beam on the CR-10. And then from there it's going to drop it into this bin that I wiped out with alcohol. Now I have a bunch of this 91% isopropyl alcohol because I print resin. I have a Form Labs printer sitting over in my desk area that I use this to clean parts, so I had a stockpile, luckily. So once that time limit's hit, what you're going to see happen is it's going to make a couple of movements to knock this part off. Now, this was originally used for printing some Pyrex stuff I have, so it's going to make some moves that aren't necessary, but it gets the job done. Now, you can see right now that the printer has set itself up for sleep mode, and like I said, that'll go on for approximately a minute. And then it's going to use that hook and drive it forward, right and it'll keep doing that now what's going to happen is my head is going to move back and it's going to set itself right about here to create a pocket to basically drive this part forward now you can see that this part is near the front now the head's moving in Now between the two, it's going to catch it. Now it comes over a little bit more. And what you're going to see is that's far enough out of the way for it to actually do its job. And what will happen is, in the process of printing, it's going to drive the part off. And 
here's the last move. Now you can see here that it comes, gets a little jam, we don't care. It sits on there. Now it's gonna drive it the rest of the way. In the bin we go. So I've wiped down this plate with alcohol, this with alcohol, the bed with alcohol, all these things, right? And the reason I did that was to ensure that the surfaces that these components touch were as clean as I could make them, right? Now what you want to do is, is you want to get a hold of your local maker community to see if anybody has a project set up already to receive these parts. And if they do, you're good to go, right? If not, call local facilities and see if they will take them before you make them. You don't want to waste your time and equipment if nobody can take these parts that you've made. So I'll talk real quick about what I did to the printer so you guys can see. I add in the T-bar, piece of plexiglass that's cut with this notch, right? Wiped everything down with alcohol. I've got a Raspberry Pi running a script that will refire the job, which it's already done. You can see here it's set the bed to 65. It's getting ready to print another one. I've got a Volcano hot end installed that allows this part to be printed quicker. So this part now prints in approximately uh, two hours instead of three and a half. But here's the key piece in all this, guys. One, I'm at home doing this in my basement and nobody in my family is sick, okay? You don't see me walking to my shop to do this. So if you guys have any questions on how I did the automation, feel free to shoot me a direct message. I just thought I'd share this quick video with you what I'm doing here in my spare time. I've got one printer set up doing this right now. I'll probably set up two or three more this weekend to do the same thing. And then if anybody needs these or wants these, let me know. I'll mail them out to you for free. All right, guys, take care.